So welcome to our panel. Dor, if you keep it open and let them stream in, that's fine. So we have a lot of action-packed uh, info for you guys today. And we're going to do kind of a free form here. We have a big agenda, but we'd like to open it up to questions as we go, as long as the questions aren't stuff that we'll hit later. So rather than us be, you know, kind of pontificating up here, you know, I'll look for hands as we go along and i um, happy to entertain questions as we go, like I said. So first I want to introduce our illustrious panel uh, of ladies. First, we have Susan McKenna uh, at the very end, who's Vice President of Marketing for both Hair Club and Bosley. She has a career spanning over 20 years. Is this too loud? Should I step back? Is it? OK. Uh, she has a career spanning over 20 years, focused on driving profitable growth for brands by re-engineering customer acquisitions and retention, by combining traditional media with dynamic digital marketing. So for the past two decades, she's uh, worked in a variety of uh, functions in both corporate digital marketing agencies and nonprofit organizations. And uh, welcome, Susan. Thank you. Uh, then we have uh, Maria Kennedy, uh, who I've known for probably over 20 years, dare I say it. Uh, she's... <laughs> She's a senior VP ad sales, direct response, and paid programming at the Discovery Networks. And she leads one of the biggest direct response teams in the industry. She's a longtime member of the Response Advisory Board and has served on the board of directors for the Electronic Retailing Association. Um, she's really grown this, her division. Um, and she's an integral player in launching not only the paid programming, but also these alternate lengths that we're going to be speaking about today. Next, we have our wonderful Kate Kalovich. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Sweet. Got lots of fans here. Who has also graciously done the Nightmare PowerPoint, which we won't bore you with many slides just today. Just three slides long. I mean, it was not. Yeah. She's VP uh, Media in Mercury Media, Philadelphia office, and has been with the company since July 2012. Um, she has been at a variety of other places, including Fox Sales, Young and Rubicam, and ID Media. And she is also going to be running our little PowerPoint today. So we're pleased to have her. Yay. And I'm your moderator, Ava Seavey, Queen Bee of Avalanche Creative Services. We're a creative services agency in New York. And uh, we do an assortment of both TV and digital outreach. OK, let's get on to the good stuff. Here we go. And I'm sorry I left my glasses in the room. So. So this is going to be a ver very free-forming question and answer thing. We're not going to have you know, these boring sort of soliloquies. So like I said, anybody who just came in, as we go along, if you want to ask a question, raise your hand and we'll get to it. So we're going to be talking about mid-form, also called mini-mercials, also called five minutes. Um, and they've been around a lot longer than you might think. So. Uh, Maria, I'll ask you this first question. How long have these alternate length spots been in existence? And uh, give us a little bit of historical background on this, just so the folks can understand. OK, well, you know. we, we started doing um, five minutes, and I, and I call them mini-mercials, about 15 years ago. Closer to the uh, mic. <laughs> OK, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we started doing these uh, about 15 years ago. Our first five minute was actually with MCI. Um, long ago, uh, the telephone company, for those of you that remember them. Um, and we started doing them first at 3 a.m., um, and then we expanded them out into threes, sixes, and 8.55s um, within our infomercial block. And then we decided, wow, you know, that's working in the overnight, so why don't we expand it out, you know, to our total day? So anywhere we have a one-hour show, um, we could run a five minute across all of our networks. So that's, that's pretty much how, how it started. Um, and, and that's been a, a great business of ours. Um, and, and we've expanded now into also seven minute spot lengths. So we can do twos, threes, fours, fives, sevens. And we've even done a nine in the past, but let's not 
go crazy yet. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep with the fives and the sevens for now. Yeah, actually, uh, when I did my first five, I, I had no idea what the format would be. I think it was in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, you know, there's got to be something in between a half hour and a two-minute spot, and I reached out to Maria, and she, I, I said, can you show me what one of these looks like? And I remember she sent me a DVD. I think I still have it. <laughs> uh, here's three five minutes that are running on, on our networks now, and so I conned one of my clients into doing one, and the rest was history, but it was, it was really, uh, you know, back in the day, kind of an unheard of thing. As, and speaking of that, um, I'd like to speak a little bit about the type of creative formats used in sevens, fives, fours, threes. Susan, do you want to talk about that a little? Sure. So closer. Can you, yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, so we're using the five-minute format. We're we're beginning to look at the three and the four, thanks to Ava, um, and the two-minute format. Um, and I think it's about storytelling, no matter what format, no matter what length. I think attention spans are lessening as more digital technology distracts us. Um, so I think we're still storytelling. I think we're still using two or three or four CTAs, as many as we can cram into a five-minute spot. Um, but I still think it's got to be emotive, and that's what we're trying to accomplish uh, with the hair club spots, is to really tell stories about people's journey. For us, it's about hair loss. Um, for others, it might be about weight gain or weight loss or fitness or health or uh, a widget. Um, but I think the five-minute format really does lend itself for these small little vignettes, consumable content that, that then lends itself to retelling that story online. So what I try to do on the, on the alternative formats is to bring people to our website um, or our call center where they can have a conversation with people and really... Um, engage with prospects. And I think the 28-minute format, while it's not extinct, it's definitely an endangered species because I think people don't watch those commercials and those shows very long um, because of the format. I, I have a whole other concept as to how we can change that, but I won't get into that today. Okay, great. Yeah, um, also, um, we, we've been doing fives for, I guess, the last eight or nine years, and we've really done every format that is available in long form. We've done the talk talk show, sort of documentary style, testimonial driven with CTAs. I, I usually have about between two and three, two and three. CTAs in a five minute show. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I've seen, I've seen fives with one CTA at the end, um, but I don't think that's the norm. Mm -hmm. So, um, as far as creative uh, formats and, and products and services. Um, Maria, what, what types of products and services are most prevalent for these alternative lengths? Um, I mean, they're not necessarily right for every gizmo and gadget. What, what are the type of genres that you're seeing most in the, in the five-minute format? It's pretty similar to the long form where we have uh, the beauty category, we have charitable orgs, um, we also have uh, cookware. That's, that's actually been one of our most successful um, fives, but again, the reason why we started to do fives and we believe in them, and I and I think the reason why they've lasted so long is because it does it does give long form clients the opportunity to expand their reach onto networks that you know, like in my case, Animal Planet that does not have long form, you know, or any of our other networks that does not have long form. It really allows the clients to you know ex expand their reach and to to take the time to say what they want to say, which is you know, again, giving them the opportunity to, to get their message out there um, on a bigger number of networks. And again, as Susan mentioned earlier, the, the attention spans are shorter, um, and, and we know that this is a format that works and will hopefully continue to grow. We're, we're seeing a lot of lead gen kind of services gen. also in yep. the fives and, um, and continuity products as well. There are some hybrids now too, um, like like Waterpick, like Generac. Um, people are really, they're, they're paying attention to this format because it is working for them. Um, Wise, Capital Brands, Humana. Um, so there, there are some, some really big clients here that are, that are utilizing this format. Kate, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, one thing I was just going to say, uh, a lot of our clients benefit from, and I think Susan touched on this, um, before and after shots for something that is beauty related or weight loss related is very strong. Um, the ability to have multiple testimonials in a five minute um, also is very strong. And for our cookware, 
um, which might be a little bit more expensive. They use the five minute to show exactly what you can do with that cookware so that somebody will pay the $250 it is for the you know cooktop set or whatever it is. So the five minute does, without going overboard to the long form, still have the benefits of long form of showing the testimonials before and afters and all that. Right. Just for uh, the people that came in late, uh, we're kind of having an open format where if you have a question along the way, um, I'll look for hands that get raised. We're, we do have a Q&A at the end, but we want to be able to keep the conversation flowing and you know be able to respond to any questions you may have along the way. So I'll try to look for hands as I go. Um, the next question is, I, I'm sure people are interested in how these alternate length mid-forms are different technically than either long or short vis-a-vis -vis closed captioning, disclosures, you know, the kind of things that we see in long form that we don't see in short form. So, Kate, could you clue us into that a little bit? So, I'm actually not sure if I know the answer to this question. For closed captioning for long form, you do need... Oh, uh, you don't need closed captioning for fives. Don't. I don't know. We do. <laughs> oh, you do? Some, some do, some don't? Okay, so it's yeah. interesting. I've and, never run into an issue with closed captioning for the five minutes. Right, and, yeah. then, and then the disclosures that we have in the beginning of infomercials are generally not needed in right. a five. Right, right. 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 Sorry. And, and any other um, thing that you can talk about it re regarding the differences in fives to either long or short? In terms of creative? In terms of anything. In terms of... In ter well, for, for I think one of the misconceptions with midform is that, and, and um, uh, I think Maria touched on this a little bit, one of the misconceptions with midform is that it's really only available where long form is available. Um, it's actually available in every day part. There's up to 60 networks that, national networks that sell midform. Um, along with some local availability too. I mean, even being here for the past two days, I've been talking to, you know, many vendors who are now intrigued by it and, you know, might be moving things around in order to open up that availability to us. So it is something where, and Marie again touched on this, but you can get into day parts that you might not be able to get into long form and it's more available than people think. Right, and, and, and it's been becoming more and more available. I remember when I did my first five in 2007, there was very limited availability and it keeps growing and growing and growing. Uh, one of the great things about the five minute are the, is the ROI. And anybody who's interested in profitability, ROI, payback, um, the fives are killer. I mean, they can outperform infomercials. Um, they, it, it's unbelievable. So uh, Kate, can you talk a little bit about the type of ROI that you can get in relation to either short or long and, and what kind of a great value that is? Sure. We, we had a client that actually with us personally at Mercury was one of the um, first uh, groups that signed on to do five minutes. So we had a history with them of doing 60s and 120s. So they also did long form. So there was never um, up until about 2012 um, this mid-length in their campaigns. So once we had sort of worked with Maria and you know understood what the five minute creative should look like and what the messaging should be, we then incorporated it into our campaign. So at this point we had 60s, 120s, um, three, fours, and fives all in this one campaign. And from the get go, we saw that specifically the five minute was well outperforming um, the 120 in terms of an MER. So they had a 40% stronger ROI against the five minute than they did against their um, two minute. And then even with the threes and fours, in some cases, it was you know 20 to 25% stronger. Um, in, and even for the campaign like that, again, with all the availability, you can mix and match. There were day parts and stations that did really well against the three minute. So we kept the three minute on that network and moved things around. And it, it, but it was clear really from the minute we started running that five minute and mid form length that it was much stronger than the short form. And Susan, uh, from the marketer side, do you have any uh, stats or anything about ROI that you'd like to add to that? Maybe a little. 
Maybe a smidge. Uh, actually, I was just going to add to what Kate was saying. Um, the midform really performs very well for us. That's why we, we have it at Hair Club. We're about to do it at Bosley. Um, I like the day parts that we can get and certainly the time of day that we're able to buy. Um, and I'm, I don't look at MER as much as I look at cost pers in terms of calls, in terms of leads and sales. And our back end is much stronger on the five-minute set. That's why we like it. Um, our front end looks great, and it's very... Um, um, scalable, but the, the back end is very profitable for us. Uh, that's why I want to create threes and fours, because if the five works, I think the threes and fours will work. And we just started doing fives about a year and a half ago at Hair Club. And we've been working on fine-tuning and optimizing it for the last year or so. Um, so I'm excited to do it at Bosley as well. It's a very different audience at Bosley. You would think it would be the same, but it's not. Um, so we'll see what happens. But the ROI is very profitable for us on the mid-form. Yes. Um, Be nice. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Did everyone hear the question? No, I was going to say. Okay, so the question is basically to uh, elaborate on the ROI on the on the back end as far as conversions, et cetera, on the fives. Well, it's it obviously it starts on the front end because if our cost per calls or our, um, don't convert into cost per leads, well, then we can never get to a sale. Um, in terms of the measurement, I would say the lift is about twenty percent on the mid form compared to the long form. Now at Hair Club, we're our media mix on the long form, short form. Forget about mid-form for just a second. 28 to 60s and 120s. Our, our split is heavily weighted to long-form. That's because we have a franchisee model at Hair Club, and we, have, we are beholden to territories, and we have a little more um, flexibility on the buying of the 28-minute. Of the so that being said, the five-minute is sort of in that middle spot in terms of buying. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question, but the, there's a significant lift. So... What I'm challenged with, and we talked about this, is the availability. While I think it's growing, there is still limited availability with different networks. Um, you know, I'd like to see more of the convergence type of buys um, allowing us to do fives, fours, and threes. We'll get into that later, I think, on the panel. But um, because then I think it will become even more profitable and effective on the back end. Great. Which leads us to the next question. Uh, any other questions on that? on that score. So let's get into the inventory issue. So Kate, how much inventory is there? You know, can you get into this a little bit? Because I think uh, there is more than people might think, even though there's not enough for Susan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it all. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is one of the, um, the things I hear all the time from our clients is, well, I can only maybe do 20K a week in mid-form and that's it. We had a client that was spending half a million dollars a week in mid-form. Um, again, if you have 60 national networks that are offering it across multiple day parts, um, you know, from tertiary networks up to the top tier, uh, it's easy to spend that, really. Um, and at the time, it was working. It was a very successful campaign. So um, it is something that can be a campaign on its own. Um, you can identify trends by day parts and days of week and by manage it that way. So it's definitely, there's more availability out there than I think people realize. I mean, Viacom has it, Scripps has it, has, mm -hmm. has it we have it, NBCU has it on some of their networks. So there are some of the biggest network groups out there. So what exactly does it cost from a media standpoint? to run a 5K. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty Not here. enough. No. Yeah. <laughs> too much. <laughs> and uh, too much for us. <laughs> too yeah. much. Usually, to be honest, it is the, it's equivalized to a 30. So a five-minute would be, you know, 10 times the cost of a 30. Um, that's usually where you start. And, of course, as a direct response advertiser from us, you know, you do negotiate it to hit your cost pers and your goals. But it's usually, just assume it's 10 times the cost of a 30 in that day part. A 30 second. 30 second spot, right. yes. So what would you recommend to a client that's never done fives as a, as a starting test budget? If, if Presuming they're only running fives and no other media, uh, what would you recommend? So it's easy to, there are a handful of networks out there that are actually very strong, responsive, five minute networks. 
Um, they're usually either mid-tier or, you know, some of these tertiary networks where you can really get a good read, um, maybe using twenty to $30,000 a week to see, you know, what kind of response you get. Um, you can test your creative that way. Uh, make sure you have a strong creative, and then you can expand to your history channels, your discovery network, stuff like that. But it's it's feasible to get a good read on your five minute, you know, with a twenty to thirty thousand dollar weekly test. Great, and I, I know you had mentioned that you had a client that was spending. Did you say half a million a week on fives? What what would you say is the typical? Uh, five minute, like in rollout, like what would you consider a rollout number for a five? Right now, I think our rollout campaigns for mid form average around 50,000 a week, I would say. 30, I'm like looking at everyone in the front row. Yeah, 50 to 75,000 a week would probably be the norm for a rollout. And and what what is the uh, saturation level in, in, in short form? You know, they say it you know, saturates after a certain time, same for long form. What, what would you say that that would be for mid form? I think it probably depends on the campaign itself. The one I was mentioning before has been running the same creative literally since 2012 um, and still gets strong response to it and has a profitable MER. But we definitely have had clients who sort of hit a plateau maybe after six months, but that's just a time to refresh your creative, see if you can you know, try other networks or um, we, but we've had campaigns mid form that have been running for years. Yeah. Did I see a hand before? No. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Ava, you have a question. Oh, yes, sir. We, we can't, I can't hear it. She's, she's got an advice gone. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Thanks, Vi. Most of our clients have told us that the mid form is really only working for them when it's part of a short form campaign that's established or as part of a long form campaign. And certainly, you know, so, someone who's already in the omni-channel space, who's got a lot of brand awareness, getting more reach and, and finding more, a, a newer audience makes a lot of sense. But um, I guess I'm trying to get clarification. If someone's new to DR and they're coming in, and, and is it a recommendation to say that you can go out with five minutes as a testing vehicle before they've done anything else? Or does it really need to be part of an overall campaign? Great question. Mm -hmm. we, we have definitely had clients that have come to us that have never done advertising, but depending on the product that they have, which might, as we were saying before, some type of expensive product or maybe a financial um, product that somebody needs the consideration to go in to, to actually buy or purchase, um, we have said you can definitely, it's also cheaper to make a five-minute creative than it is a long form creative. So if they're already limited as to um, budget, and but they do need to get out there, but they, they need the time longer than a 60 or a 120, we have launched campaigns with just a five minute or, th or three or four. So it is possible. Yes, uh, in addition, uh, we've had clients that have come directly to us to launch with a five minute. And depending on the performance of the five, they then either later went on to cut threes, fours, twos, et cetera or they just kept running the five. And uh, I have fives that have been running on the air for probably five years now that are still on. What would you say to the client that the five does, does not perform where it needs to, to be? Are you, would you say to them, oh, you need to go do long form? Or is it, because a lot, of, a lot of the entrepreneurs, they got one shot at this and the creative costs are less. And so if the fives don't work, then they, they kind of pack up and they might go, go try some, something else. So it's, um, I'm really interested in this because I, I've got a lot of people on the biz dev side that are calling me and, and they're saying, oh, we're hearing, hearing more and more about this five minute. And they know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> and um, w when we look at it and they're selling high priced products that would typically be long form is the right vehicle for them. And we just don't want to see them stumble out of the gate and then end up not doing anything. So I guess, I don't know if there's a question in there, but. Yeah. I, I think um, I can take a step at the answer in, Kate. Um, I think a lot of that depends on the product, the price point, the back end. It depends on all the same things that it would depend on if you're doing a long form or a short form. But candidly, um, I've never had a five that bombed as badly as either an infomercial or a two-minute bomb. I've, I've never had a five that came out of the gate and bombed for whatever <clears throat> use that is to anyone. 
I think the format is incredible. I think it performs psychologically and emotionally the same way an infomercial would perform mm -hmm. to the viewer. And the close rate is very similar to what an infomercial would be at, you know, a fifth the cost. I, so. I, I would agree with that, Ava. And I, I'd like to just add, I, I've never been conventional in this industry, if anybody knows me. So I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that like I said earlier, I think the 28-minute format is very much um, an endangered species right now. And I think there's a lot of different reasons for that. But to answer your question, from my perspective, um, I'm not sure some of the powers that be at Bosley would appreciate this, but I don't, I don't think that the 28-minute format is a place that we're going to continue producing for either company long term. Because I believe that, the, that there's this thing out there called convergence. Um, and that's the convergence of media. Consumers are not consuming media in single channels any longer. And that's significant because I can't just run a 28 minute or a 60 second and expect that they won't go online and research my company. Whether there's brand awareness or not is, is not a factor because the internet is insidious. And what is, I read an article the other day that 82%, I'm sorry, 88% of people watching TV are also on their mobile phones at the same time, 88%. So um, I also read another article that talked about Facebook and how insidious Facebook is. And so they're on their phones, they're on Facebook, they're watching your commercial, whether it's a 60 or a five, or you have their attention for six or five, four or five minutes. Um, I think convergence is really taking the place of the 28 minute format. And what I mean by that is, what Ava said is you have time to tell the story very efficiently in a five minute format. Once you tell that story and they go online and they find your brand online and they can engage with your brand, you have more time than you would with a 28-minute format. And you're now not only talking at them, but with them. And that's a huge game changer in my opinion. So for these young brands, for these companies that are looking at, I've got one shot, I think that the five-minute format can be very powerful because the, there's not as many cost limitations and the barrier to entry is much smaller in the, in the five-minute format than it is for a 28-minute. So if I had it to do all over again and I didn't inherit a 28-minute show for both companies, I probably wouldn't produce another one. So, Additionally, statistically, uh, several years ago, they did a, it was one of the trade organizations that did some research uh, that polled how long the average viewer watches an infomercial for, and years ago it was eight minutes, and then it shrunk down to five, and I believe it's lower than that now. So if you can tell, and which is why the 2830s are so repetitive, because you need to repeat basically the same thing in each five-minute pod. So if you have one shot to give all the information in five minutes, and you have two CTAs in that five-minute time, I mean, just there's no reason why it wouldn't really outperform either the short or the long form. Uh, Kate, did you want to add to that? I was just going to say, too. Closer. Um, sorry. Uh, since we all sort of have a history of knowing what does work creatively for five minutes, your clients, we would, we would help them, you know, make sure that they have the best foot forward when they launch a five minute campaign. There is sort of a science as to what your messaging should be in a five minute and how it should flow. Um, so it, it's to, to Susan's point, yes, it's your clients might be nervous about it, but it's probably their best way to get into the market. And for any producers out there, um, it's very efficient and not that difficult to take uh, footage from a 30-minute show and cut it down into a five. So you don't necessarily, I think the first five I ever di did was a cut down from an infomercial and it outperformed the infomercial incredibly well. Uh, so you don't need to necessarily go forward and produce new creative for the five or even the four or the three, you can very efficiently take uh, testimonials that exist, any other footage that exists, um, B-roll stuff, whatever you have already shot, uh, and very efficiently cut together a five. Uh, there's a lot of examples of fives on my website. If anybody wants to go see like structure and format, um, not pitching myself, but just as an educational uh, tool, avalanchecreative.tv. There's a whole section of fives, and you can see all the different formats on there. Um, Kate, let's get into day parts again um, a little bit, because I think um, it's, it's a very different animal than a short form or 
a long form. And the, I think one of the beauties of these midforms is the ability to reach a different audience uh, based on the day parts that you can get in five. So if you can get into that a little bit, that would be great. Sure. Yeah, I know we talked about this before about, you know, um, that we do have $500,000 running per week and we can identify day par trends. I just went back into the, you know, our past history with Midform. About 40% of our dollars were in daytime, neck followed by early fringe, and then the overnights took the rest. So, um, and we were in every day part available there. So you can get in prime. Usually, again, it might be on your tertiary networks or your second tier networks where you're in prime, but you can be in prime. So it's available everywhere, weekends. Monday through Friday, it's available everywhere. Susan, did you want to add to that? Uh, no, I'm shaking my head yes, okay. because <laughs> that's, that's been my experience too. And that, that's what I like about it is the day parting and the time of day that we can get with the mid-form. Um, when I see numbers, I, I see a lot of daytime um, buys that I don't see with the long-form um, format. So I like that. It shows better efficiency for us. Um, the back end is much, that's where your lift is, a good percentage of that lift is from not just the day parting, but the time of day buys that you're getting, so. You're uh, partnering with us on, on our content when you're running during the day. As Susan mentioned earlier, you know, it's really important that people, they're not watching networks anymore, they're watching content. And with the five during the day, you know, even in the overnights, you're partnering with us on our content. Here, here's the issue for me is that it's quality. So we, our, our cost pers are higher than somebody who's selling a $50 product, obviously. Um, so for us, when we run the long format in the overnight slots, the quality of not just the lead, but the, the, sale, the, the number of sales we get and the cost per on the sales is not as good. That was just kind of a gut check for me, but um, we've recently validated. I looked at almost two years worth of data recently at Hair Club and at Bosley, and those overnight slots, while we get an influx of calls and traffic to the website and we get a good amount of leads, the volume is good, the quality is not. Um, and so, and not only if they, if they do buy, if we do get a good cost per on it, they're buying a lower end product. So Hair Club has different products and services, Bosley's, no longer a one-trick pony, but for the most part, for 40 years, we've been just, just surgery. Hair Club has a suite of services that we offer, and what I found is that depending on the day part, depending on the time of day and the buys, it made a significant difference in the back-end quality. Um, what did the retention look like for that customer? What kind of product did they buy? So if you dig a little bit deeper into the analytics, it's not just about your MER. It's, it's about what happens after that sale occurs. What kind of product are they buying and how long are they staying on it if it's a continuity product? That made a significant difference. And when I dug into those numbers, that's why I really like the mid-form. And I'd, I'd like to do more of it. So. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And uh, we've done a lot of continuity type of products in the fives and the stick rate on you know, the five versus a short form is measurable. Uh, yeah. So, and the, quali the quality of, of the people that are calling is, is very high. Um, talk about clearance, Kate. Um, what type of clearance rate does, do the fives have in, in sort of in a comparative sense to the long or the short? So it's actually um, a little bit higher in terms of when you're comparing it to a two minute, just because they do, the networks do make room for this five minute to be placed. Um, but one thing that we do find is usually at the end of a quarter, the end of a month, if a network does need to make up some uh, ratings for general advertisers, it's obviously very easy for them to just get rid of one spot and fill it with, you know, 60s and, and get that done pretty easily. So um, it's just something as we do with DR in general is just keep an eye on it as a quarter progresses and you know you get you can get pre logs you get post logs from the stations. It's the same as you would with um, short form. So it's just something the clearance levels we usually see we might be booking something in clear 75% of it. Mm -hmm. Maria, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, actually, there, there are ways, and, and we, we've done this with our agencies that have five minutes. Um, you can book out a day part for the quarter. You can book out a day part for the month. If, if that's working for you, there are ways um, that we could, on the Discovery Networks, um, place your inventory for an entire quarter, and you'll know where that inventory will run, what programming, what, day, what program, what day part, what network. Non-preemptible. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Um, and what about cancellation policy? Uh, again, uh, in comparison to the short or the long? Uh, in general, the networks that we work with usually were able to make those changes again like we would with 60s or 120s. You know, in two days we could be off air, could be moved around, added to. Um, there's a handful of networks that do require a month's commitment. Um, or do have a two-week cancellation policy, but more often than not, it's treated like short form. So you do have the ability to get out of something within 72 hours. Great. Susan, do you have anything to add to any of those questions? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked a little bit about TV in the uh, alternate length. Um, Maria, I, I did want to ask you also, um, as far as the mid-form, I know you mentioned you have run seven-minute, nine-minute, threes and fours. Um, which is the predominant format, and percentage-wise, are fives still? Yes, fives. And then which would come in second place after the fives? Um, I'm going to say probably threes. Threes in second uh, place. Threes, fives. Yep. Okay. So are you seeing more three-minute buys these days than you had been? Yes. I mean, a lot of pharma companies are using three-minute formats now. And, and what about the Sorry, inventory? Uh, pharma companies. What, what um, about the inventory for threes and fours? Are they... Are is the inventory for threes and fours, I'm just curious, I'm sorry, yeah. is the inventory for threes and fours the same as it is for fives, uh, where, where fives were seven years ago, or no, is it the same as fives today? I can, I can speak for, for my networks, um, where uh, we, threes and fours are, are a little bit easier to clear for us because we can clear those in half-hour shows. Um, we, we work with our ops group to, to try to get the longest length spots to clear as we can in every single program. Mm -hmm. we're, we're even getting them to put a five minute in a, in a half hour show, but that's the entire break. Um, so we're, we're really trying to make inroads there because we know there is such a high demand, but a three can go anywhere. And that's the same across the other networks yep. too. Okay. So Kate, are you seeing more threes and fours? Right now, um, we are predominantly with our clients in the five-minute space, but there were a handful of networks that are actually strong five-minute networks that might have run into these issues with new programming where they couldn't place a five-minute anymore. So when that happens, we go to our clients and say, you need to cut a three-minute almost immediately to get back on these networks. So I think the three-minute is growing with us. Yeah, I, I know a couple of years ago the four-minute format was pr predominantly for Hispanic media. Have you seen a shift to see four-minute uh, you know, coming into the Anglo market, the U.S. Is, the U.S. Uh, English speaking market as well, or is it still predominantly Hispanic? I would say it's. We do have some fours. I mean, oh, you're making. Boy, oh boy, we do have some <laughs> fours, um, but mostly it's still predominantly a five. Great. Okay. Any any further questions on TV before we move to the digital world? Anyone? I actually, I'm sorry, I did just want to expand on that. I totally forgot to mention the Hispanic market. I mean, it's very strong with the mid-form. So if you do have any Spanish language creative, we've run multiple campaigns. Um, the availability is there as much as it is on the Anglo, in the Anglo market. Almost all of the Hispanic networks um, have three, fours, and fives. Um, and to what Ava said before, they have more avail availability in the fours because most of their breaks are four minutes. Um, and they work very, even the four minute works better in some cases than the five minute in the Hispanic market, but it is available there. Okay, good. Great. Yes, sir. Uh, do we have a microphone for him? Thank you. Plaid shirt, last row. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, my question is, I got here late, so I might be asking a dumb question, but anyway, I'm going to ask it. Uh, like the price, considerably, if you compared all of them in the same time of the day or whatever, like a what, kind of give some ballpark figures. Of, I know this is a general question, but like a 30 second, a two minute, a three minute, a four minute, a five minute, kind of like something to think about because I'm kind of new at this. Are you talking about the media cost? The no, the question. commercials, the infomercials or whatever. Oh, to, to produce a five-minute. Yeah, like, you know what the st stations would charge, you know, for those sections. Media. Oh, the media. media. Okay. Yeah. Kate? 
So um, again, while I was preparing for this, I did an average cost of a five minute against that huge campaign that we did, and the average cost came out to be between 500 to 1,000. So on the high end, a five minute cost is usually around $20,000, and on the low end, it could be as cheap as 100 bucks. So it's all dependent on what network you're on, but that's kind of the average. It's about 10, time, 10 times the cost of a 30-second spot yeah. to purchase the media. Right, yeah. About 10 times the cost of a 30-second spot. Compared the two minute and three minute, like in that range, what would it be? It's it's all it's all equivalized from the thirty second up. So, um, you know, it would be the five minute is ten times the cost of a thirty. The four is eight times the I cost. Got you. Yeah. Thank you. Which means it's one sixth the cost of an infomercial. Yes. yes. <laughs> as far as media time goes. Any other questions before we move on to digital? Okay. So what other digital formats are available in mid-form? Um, and I want to get in a little bit to addressable VOD, cord cutters, et cetera. So uh, Susan, why don't you talk about Me that? first? Yes. <laughs> why, why don't you explain to the audience, does, does everyone in the audience know what addressable is? Yes? So you don't need an explanation of what I that is? I see a lot of, yeah, I, I see no's, yeah. yes. So there's, okay, so why don't you talk about that a little bit and talk about what's available? Okay, it's, um, it's somewhat tied with VOD sometimes, um, but I think Maria or Kate would probably be better qualified to define it. Literally, in my opinion, addressable allows me to target better, but I'll, mm -hmm. I'll let you guys maybe. It try, yeah, it try, I, just, I just did a thing for you. Um, Addressable TV is um, sort of a deeper dive in than programmatic. So with addressable TV, you're buying the impression against your target audience. So it's, it's limiting audience. the yeah. waste yeah. that you would get from hitting you know more people that might be tuning in, but half your target audience is tuning in. Um, it's just a it's just a deeper way to target. And you tar can target you geographically. Yeah, yeah. And, we right. say it's audience based. It's audience yeah. based buying. Yeah. You're buying impressions instead of spots, basically. And talk a little bit about video on demand, Maria, like what kind of things your networks are offering now and, and as far as the uh, uh, lengths that are available for that, particularly the five minute. Yep. Um, we've been, at, as we launched in cable, we were the first to launch five minutes for video on demand. Um, we're finding that um, even post-roll, um, the clients are loving it. They're doing really well because on day four is when we get most of the inventory on video on demand. Um, the break formats go back to normal, small break formats. So in a one-hour show, there would be about five 30-second spots there. So you, you go through that, that show very, very quickly, and then you get to the end, and you see this spot come on, and you're, wow, what is this? And then, you know, you're watching it, and you're buying it, and you're, you're going to the site, and, you know, it, it's, it's driving. It's, it's working very, very well um, as a vehicle to drive to web and to sell direct. Um, as anybody that has tried the five-minute format in VOD, you know, they're like, we'll take it all for the quarter on all the networks. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, well, you know, we would love to sell it to just one person, but we can't. Um, but what we're trying to do uh, is expand that out to our connected TV platform, uh, which, is, which is very brand new. Um, and we're working on uh, trying to get those um, to move forward. Hopefully in the next few months we can, we can get our connected TV platform, which is Apple and Roku. And um, we'll hopefully, um, and Fire TV, we'll, we'll expand that out um, moving forward in, in, in the coming months. Are there twos, threes, and fours available in VOD? Twos are always available. Two, twos are always available in VOD. Mm -hmm. But not threes and fours yet. Threes and fours are a little bit more difficult, but again, we can absolutely try to work with you. If you have a client that wants to test that, you know, we can, on certain networks, have a little bit more flexibility than others. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Kate, did you have anything else to add to that? One thing that we're also learning with this coming from a DR client, as Maria said, it's working like that, even in a post-roll position. You know, so people assume that once your show's over, you leave, um, but it has been a viable way, again, to expand your, your mid-form campaigns is doing this VOD. One of the interesting things in the digital buying space, I think we're all finding, it's a little bit of Wild West City again, 
Um, there seems to be a lot of crossover as far as the media buy goes. I mean, who do you use? Your digital shop, your TV shop, your creative shop. Uh, it, it seems like there's, you know, how do you handle that as a marketer, Susan? Like, who, who buys the digital media now? It, it's a tough question. Um, and, you know, I think the traditional media buying agencies are moving into the digital sphere, um, but there's an issue with somewhat for us, and I'm only speaking from the Hair Club Bosley perspective. Um, you know, there's some issues with tracking. Um, the digital sphere has very granularized tracking, and those who have grown up, doing digital, um, know how to track every single movement you make. Don't forget that when you're on Facebook. Um, so doing that with a broadcast media is different. Um, we've been trained to measure different things through broadcast media. Um, the other thing I think, and so I want to get back to your question, but I, I think the other thing that's worth noting is I said convergence earlier because I think it's really important, especially as we start seeing um, you know, more and more of the cord cutting occurring, 38% of kids under the age of 35 don't have cable. So um, Maria's network going to a VOD format and platform is significantly strategic, certainly for a brand like Hair Club or, or Bosley who's trying to reach out to a younger demographic. Because we feel that we, we've, we've targeted our, our older demographic on TV and we'll continue to do that for the next 10 to 20 years. Um, but it's our millennials and our sort of fringe um, uh, Gen Xers that we're trying to reach who are on T streaming platforms. TV platform. Who, who are, you know, this is why the Olympics and the ratings were spun so much by NBC because people didn't watch it on network TV. People went to YouTube and watched the races on YouTube or downloaded streaming somewhere. Um, so, um, now I forgot what I was going to, what, what, what the original question was because I went We, we were talking about who buys the digital. Yeah, yeah. so for us, um, we're using our digital agency um, at Hair Club. And at Bosley, it's a little bit of an in, an in-house effort to go direct with networks and uh, an external. And we haven't really made the decision as to which media buyers we're going to leverage. But my big issue with our broadcast media buying is the tracking capability. Um, because they're mostly on the core system and their back-end systems and analytics are not prepared for the type of metrics that I need from a digital perspective. Um, the digital tracking um, mechanisms are very granular, so if they're not set up to get into the really ticky-tacky stuff I need, how many views, how many impressions, how, where did they go from there, what's the click stream look like, did they watch 30 seconds or 15 seconds, what's the event tracking on that video, if they're not prepared to provide me with those metrics, then I can't really make the campaigns work for me because I'm measuring more than just the back end. I'm measuring engagement, I'm measuring views, because we're getting more and more sophisticated with attribution modeling um, and, and media mix modeling. Um, Google has a new tool out, um, they, they purchased Adometry recently, so Google 360 has now rolled up the Adometry tool, which is a media mix modeling tool. If you don't have it and you can afford it, get it, because that is trying to capture this convergence that's happening. Because before it was, let me measure the attribution of all the people that are on TV and what they're doing online. And we think we're getting a lift from our search and our, our online from TV, but we're not really sure. And as direct marketers, that doesn't work for me. I need to measure it directly. The convergence of broadcast with digital allows me the metrics that I need to really measure broadcast really granularly like I can digital. Can you talk, Susan, about some of the uh, innovations as far as mid-form length stuff that you're going to be, you know, without getting into too much pr pr proprietary information, but some of the things that you're going to try digitally uh, coming into the future? It goes back to our original um, comment earlier on today, which is uh, about storytelling. Um, I think 10, 15 years ago, maybe even five or six years ago, we, we were really myopic about our channels and the marketing, direct response marketing that we did. And there was assumptions made. TV advertisers didn't talk to radio advertisers, didn't talk to direct mail, didn't, you know, we all had different campaigns and we tried very hard to connect the dots, but we can't get away with that anymore. And so for me, it's about storytelling. And so what we're looking to do is leverage our media channels to tell those stories. Um, with the digital sphere, whether it's mobile or the internet, 
not only can we tell the story so I'm talking to you, but I can have a conversation with you. And that for us is a game changer. Our sales cycle is lengthy. It's a, it's a 40 to 60 day sales cycle on average, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. But if I can engage you in a conversation, um, I can capture more qualified leads and I can get a better back end. So for us, it's about storytelling. So our digital sphere may have more high funnel awareness building kind of 30, 60, 120 vignettes, I call them, um, driving people to a web page that then has your hard DR sell to capture that lead, to make that sale. Um, I may leverage broadcast uh, in the mid form um, sphere to drive more awareness. And I think he had the question about a young brand. What would a five minute set do for me? Well, I could do some hard transactional selling on that, but I could also use that as awareness building tool because remember, 82%, 88% of the people watching TV are on their mobile phones at the same time. So I hope that answers your question. Is there a particular platform or place that you would do some of the uh the, the digital, like are, are there particular channels, are there particular places that you would, would use these? In the United States, 92% um, of the population is on Facebook. So I would be remiss if I didn't say that you shouldn't create a 60 second spot on Facebook. And it's my opinion that these uh, social networks, Twitter uh, is now in the game, Instagram is now in the game, and of course YouTube, uh, which I'll get to in a second, because um, I see that as slightly different uh, platform. Um, not to mention all of your traditional channels. Maria mentioned you know, some of the efforts that, that they're making on their networks. Um, so um, social media is really where I would begin and test and tinker, because not only can you buy spots, you can actually, if you have a, a decent dis digital footprint, you can actually create threes and fours, test your CTAs very cost effectively, and get an idea of whether or not it's going to be effective. Now, that being said, I also think your audience is different online than on TV. So if you just go pure channel marketing, then you may be capturing a slightly different audience. So don't base, put all of your cookies in that box, so to speak. <laughs> so right. I would start with social networks. And, and it seems like there's a lot more five minute uh, uh, running on YouTube. Would, would yes. that be an accurate statement? A lot more fives? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think, so YouTube is a very different animal. Um, YouTube owned by Google. YouTube is the number one search engine if you're looking for music. I don't know if anybody knew that, but also for people under the age of 35, YouTube is the number one search engine. Remember that? Um, so you can also post content there and build your own channel, which I find really interesting and sort of something that we'll be experimenting with from a DR perspective, which is scary, but I think important to have those conversations. Um, but they have a, a, um, a tool called TrueView, which is a, those are pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll videos that you can buy. Um, Google is trying really hard to compete with some of the DR advertising media, and so there's talk, and I can neither confirm nor deny, from my Google reps that um, you know these alternative formats will be something that might or might not be offered on the TrueVu format and platform. And so that would be of interest to me if I could put in a three-minute spot instead of a 60-second or a 30-second, which is typically what you buy on, on on uh, YouTube. Great. I know, Maria, your uh, Discovery is doing some innovative stuff with some other digital, if you want to talk about a couple of the other I innovations that you guys are doing oh. with, with the Go. And well, all it's, not, it, it's our TV Everywhere platform, uh, DGO. Uh, we have it on uh, nine of our networks, um, and, it, and it's done very, very well. So I, I wouldn't necessarily call it innovative. I think it's just, it's our TVE platform, and and like Susan was saying, it you know it's all about the content and and putting your brand um, in the right content. And we at Discovery, we were always looking to find ways to partner with you and and our content in a bigger way. Um, in fact, our um, our saying for the upfront this year was connecting our fans with your brands. So we really want to try, you know, and find different ways to partner. So if we're not offering something, please ask us. Um, I love to be the first to do things. We were the first to do the fives. We were the first to do the fours. And, you know, I, I love to be the first to do anything with you. So please shoot the ideas at me anytime. Any other comments from the panel? And we'll, uh, yes. Uh, can we get the mic? I'll, I'll just talk loud. Okay. 
matches as far as networks go so i don't know if you guys all so hear the that. question was how much of our online tv buying matches like TV, if you're buying TV and fox online are you buying it on tv too very little okay. <laughs> very little right now and i think that's something that we need to get better at um i i you know back remember back in the day when you used to buy a print ad and you'd get the online companion banners remember those days <laughs> back in the 90s because um, this thing called the internet net might be big we're not sure um, and we'll throw that in for free. We're not doing a good job of that. And I don't think a lot of DR advertisers are, frankly. Um, at Bosley, uh, we just brought in a new media manager, and that's a big, significant part of her role is to really create this convergence in not only the media buying, but this consistency in the messaging. Because that's a big concern for us, is that um, you know, coming into these two companies, I've only been in this role for a year, and. Um, there was such a big disconnect between the different channels and the the messaging and the offers and um, so it, it just permeated everything. So the, the straight answer is no, we're not. We're doing a terrible job of that and I think we need to get a lot better at it. And if I look at my, my friends in the same position, I think a lot of advertisers do, a lot of marketers do. You, you need to spread the love a little bit. 7% um, of all TV viewership now is coming from video on demand. So if you're not there, right, just in that small little world, you're missing 7%. You know, you need to go where the viewers are, and the viewers are everywhere now. Mm -hmm. You need to follow, you know, follow the good content to where the viewers are. And they're, you know, they're online. They're on our digital platforms. They're on TV everywhere. They're on video on demand. So for those advertisers who are not testing, you should definitely, you know, test all of the new formats you know, because for you, you're missing that audience and you're missing that chance if you don't dip your toe into those new digital platforms. I, sir, um, can we get the mic over here? <laughs> um, you were mentioning that you, since you're going on social media also on YouTube and Facebook, it's a little bit easier on YouTube to uh, measure the ROI with some of the tracking that you can add to the videos. But for something like Facebook, how do you measure the ROI for it because it's not as simple. How, how do I measure ROI on Facebook? Yeah. For so, and, and the same goes for YouTube, actually. It's, it's not easy to measure ROI on YouTube, and the true view is, is much more of a high funnel type of activity. Um, y it's very difficult to measure both uh, in any kind of online um, video right now um, in terms of back end because it's a multi click, it's a multi click path. So, we measure the micrometrics leading up to the lead and the sale and we've gotten much more sophisticated with following that consumer through their journey. So they may watch the 60 second video on Facebook and then engage with that video. So we track engagement on the video. Um, we track lift on traffic to our website. We're a lead gen shop for both companies so um, we'll track traffic and lift from the video. But again it goes back to the content. If the content is worth consuming, then the consumer will engage with your brand. If the content is, but wait, there's more. Only $5.99 if you call today within the next three minutes, you'll get blah, blah. If you do that, it won't work. And, and I think that's a lot of the times what people are missing online is that the sentiment and the appetite for content has changed. We don't want to be sold to, we want to talk with brands. And that's a significant shift in the market dynamics and the advertisers and marketers who get that are reframing that conversation on those networks. Instagram is not a network for selling. Instagram is an inspirational network where I aspire to be like Ava or Kate or Maria because I see those pictures, those, you know, whatever, right? Facebook is, what did you have for dinner today? I want to know because I'm nosy, right? So if you talk to people in the way that they want to be talked to, as Maria was just saying, in the place where they are, then you can have conversations. So I know I'm kind of skirting around your question, but I think we make the mistake a lot of times because we're such DR marketers that we always want to measure leads and sales and ROI right away. But sometimes there's a longer path between point A and point Z. And we have to leverage the tools that we have to measure the, the entire path. Um, get a good CRM is my answer to your question, like Salesforce. Um, sorry, another part of the question also. This, this will be our last question because we're kind of at the end of the time, but maybe some of us will stay after. 
So, well, I was, oh, go sorry. ahead. <laughs> Social media itself, you know, because they have a lower attention span than, let's just say, on any other media site. Do you have you guys tested lengths also on social media and see have what's I tested what the length of the videos also on social media? No, is the short answer. We've just begun dipping our toe in. Um, Hair Club is more advanced than Bosley with this. Uh, we've just begun dipping our toe here. We're beginning to look at VOD. Um, so the answer is no, we haven't. Um, I think we need to. I think Maria mentioned that earlier. I think it's important that we experiment with length and different content angles and lenses to appeal to the audience, but we have to entertain people first, engage them second, convert them third. If we don't do that, then we're not being good marketers. Thank you, everybody. Um, one last note. Um, I'm being told we have to wrap this up. Um, anybody who's in the direct response business, speaking of social media, um, there is a page which has no affiliation with any trade association or anything else. It's just a place to converse with one another. It's called Direct Response Planet. And if you want to join, uh, it's a, it's, I started this a year ago just to get us all talking together and helping one another. Uh, just go on Direct Response Planet, put your name in the till, and one of the admins will admit you. And it's just a place, a safe place to discuss all of these new types of things that are going on in our industry. I want to thank our panelists <laughs> for a great content. I don't know if this is being, is this being recorded by? Is this being recorded? Yeah, so uh, at some point, if you miss some of this, uh, you can look at a something somewhere. It'll be posted, I'm told. So um, thank you, everyone, for coming, and great job, Thank you for hosting.